etc. Um, the I would say one of the things that is the largest concern for us as a neighborhood tavern is the way that they proposed defining nightclub itself. Um, under the <coughs> under the proposed definitions for nightclub, uh, basically uh, it would it would include any bar, local tavern, pub, uh, anyone of that nature that had any type of entertainment, whether that be a DJ or a band or even a single person with a guitar, a person reading poetry, um, a neighborhood party, any, anything defined as a party. So for instance, we have the Seminole Heights Business Guild. Uh, they have their parties there. That would be something that um, would, be, uh, would meet their criteria, as far as I can tell, for, a, for an advertised party. And uh, it would have a really chilling effect on, on the arts and on music um, and on expression in general, uh, since, since obviously there's very few establishments in the city that could afford to pay, uh, as they proposed, uh, two, two officers off duty at a minimum, um, 35 to 45 dollars an hour. That's, an, that's a theme that I, that I noticed when I was watching the, the Tampa City Council debate about this in the public comment last week, and we're going to play a, a, a clip right now that um, Sandra Hines runs the club Czar. She said a proposal to require clubs to hire extra duty law enforcement officers based upon venue occupancy would put them out of business, as you're suggesting. No, my sir. Can you turn the monitor up, please, for the... $168,000 a year. We can't possibly stay So I'm, I figured I'd play this clip to the way so that people can... We actually redesigned everything when the economy fell apart. So if I play the other two, I'll, I'll say volume. their last names. We're very Would that be helpful? On one Maybe night. Give you that one night stretches financially across our whole week. So you maybe know, when this ends, when this ends, do you want to kind of follow up on what she's saying about, you know, the cost? And then okay. I'll give out the phone number again, and okay. then I'll ask yeah. you another question. The doors will eventually hurt either city. It's a revenue-driven area, and we just wouldn't be able to do that. All the other businesses Ten around seconds. would suffer. If we take all of the 18 out of it, then people will sleep in there. So that's Sandra Hine, who rubs, runs the club Czar in Ybor City. And uh, our guest here is, is um, Lux DeVoid. He owns the Mermaid Tavern in Seminole Heights. Lux, what do you think about her argument about hiring those extra officers is going <coughs> to hurt their business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think with, with places that are truly nightclubs, it would probably put most of them out of business. Um, with the remaining places, take, for instance, Ella's Restaurant, um, and ourselves and, and the independent places that I'm familiar with, uh, probably most of us would just react by not having any sort of entertainment. And, uh, and that would have a chilling effect, I think, on the arts. And obviously, there'd be a lot of musicians and other people who would uh, not have any gigs to play in the city of Tampa. You're listening to The Last Call. My name is Sean Canan. We're speaking with Lux DeVoid, who owns the Mermaid Tavern in Seminole Heights. 813-239-9663. If you'd like to weigh in on this subject of proposed changes to Tampa's nightclub ordinances, nightclub rules, um, one of those changes would be to exclude 18 to 20-year-olds, and another would be to hire extra duty law enforcement officers um, for, for, this, um, in, in for these clubs. And Lux, you, had, you owned a club in, in New Orleans, and they had similar rules. Tell us about your experience there and what happened. Well, uh, my experience there was they started out with uh, requiring a lot of bars and clubs, particularly in the French Quarter, to hire off-duty officers. And what, what really ended up happening in practice was a lot of the police would just show up to collect their paychecks. They wouldn't actually spend the hours. Um, so it sort of became a shakedown by the police officers, and uh, although I'm not, I'm not impugning the uh, integrity of the officers in Tampa or suggesting that it would be the same, uh, it really was, a, was an untenable situation. Um, a lot of the officers, I, I would just put it to you this way, the police are not meant to be an occupying force, and when you put them in that position, uh, it's really not what their job is about. They're, they're not security guards. And uh, to have them stand for hours on end outside of a nightclub uh, when they're not actually allowed to check identification, they're not allowed to um, intervene, they're not allowed to put wristbands on people uh, based on what's been proposed here, um, 
it really puts them puts them in a bad position. It's a, it's not a fun job for them, and I don't think it's a job that trained police officers are particularly uh, particularly good at. All right, we'll go now to Vic in Tampa. Hi, Vic. Do you have a question? All right, thank you for that call, Vic. Well, my understanding that the perceived problem uh, was one that was uh, framed by the Ybor City Development Corporation Board of Directors in January um, as a response to a couple of specific incidences, one of them uh, at, at uh, Club Empire, which is now closed, and another one or two incidences at, uh, at uh, oh, it's another, another club on 7th that uh, is escaping me right now, but. Uh, Anyway, they were isolated. Uh, they were uh, two, two shootings, I believe. And uh, so I think they're sort of trying to paint with a broad brush to address perhaps issues that uh, more involve just specific locations, specific club owners and, and things. I would also add, though, that um, to the best of my knowledge, both of those locations had off-duty police officers at the time that these incidents occurred. And uh, I have actually not seen any information to indicate that the, uh, the assailants were between the ages of 18 and 20, so I'm not really sure that that, that proposal addresses uh, what, what had happened there either. When you mentioned the 18 to 20 year olds, that's one of the components of this proposal. And at that Tampa City Council hearing last week, there were people who um, spoke out against this proposal, including the, a bartender at Czar, Jennifer Harvey, she said the city doesn't need to worry about people over 21 buying drinks for underage patrons. Apparently that was one of the, one of the concerns. So you get into a, a, in, into a nightclub if you're under 21, maybe you even have your hand X'd or something like that, but then a different patron would buy a drink, an, an, aged, an, an overaged patron would buy a drink for an underaged patron. But this is what, um, what Jennifer Harvey said, why that she doesn't think that that would be a problem. Yeah, can you just leave that up? Is that all right? Under 21, they are marked with X's. It turns off when the mic's um, on. Mm -hmm. It turns off when the mic's on. Different colors, so we know. Um, you only get one drink per band per person at a time. So it is a two for one special or um, any of that. They only get the do you one think, drink. They have do you think you'd be able to comment about this, about people under 21 being able to get drinks? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Before okay, great. Walk away. <clears throat> if there's anybody suspicious, we constantly, the bar staff, or maybe you think that they might be doing it, that they're not doing it. So that is Czar bartender Jennifer Harvey. She said that if there's anyone who's concerned about people f from the ages of 18 through 20 being able to get alcohol inside these clubs, they shouldn't be concerned about that. Lux, what's your experience been? Well, I think that um, some of the folks that are concerned about that probably are basing their experiences on, on things that may have uh, taken place quite a while ago, uh, you know, possibly even decades in the past. And uh, I really think that the, the clubs that are responsible, it's extremely easy to prevent that. They have ample security staff. And I know uh, at my own bar, which of course is fairly easy to see everyone that's, <laughs> that's in there and most of the people we know since we're in, uh, just a neighborhood place, um, we're, we're very aggressive about that. Uh, if anyone looks even, you know, if they <laughs> might be in their 30s, we, we always are, are very, very cognizant of where multiple drinks are going and carding groups, even if not everyone in the group is buying a drink. Um, I think, once again, it's very important to stress that the way they've defined nightclubs would mean uh, not just big clubs in Ebor, but it would mean restaurants and, and everything of that nature where you would have to bar people from 18 to 20 years old. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org if you'd like to join this conversation. We're speaking with Lux the Void. He owns the Mermaid Tavern. My name is Sean Canan. You're listening to The Last Call at 544 in the afternoon. 813-239-9663. Going back to the police officers, 
Um, you had mentioned to me before the show started that, that the, eventually New Orleans recognized that there was some problem with, with hiring off-duty police officers and that they stopped that practice. They, ma they made it actually, they prohibited off-duty police officers. Yes. Yeah, after a couple of years of that experience, they determined that it was having a, not only a, negative effects on the bars and, and nightclubs, but also is having a very deleterious effect on the police themselves. So they actually uh, reversed the law in a way where they actually made it illegal for off-duty officers to work for, for bars and nightclubs. Why, what was the deleterious uh, problem? Well, I think uh, just human nature. Uh, you know, the same officer would be standing there at a, at a bar or nightclub day in, day out, they would come to know all of the customers. They would come to let certain people through um, and, and have many of the, the flaws that just an ordinary person would, would have. They start to, in some cases, identify more uh, with the bar and the patrons of the bar than they do as a police officer. Um, in extreme examples, some of them were actually protecting drug dealers at, at bars and clubs, getting kickbacks. Uh, they were put in a situation where it was very, very easy for them to be uh, corrupt or to, to bend the rules, and, and, uh, and some, some did. And this is a similar situation as what Tampa is proposing. I mean, I'm not saying the exact same thing might happen, but uh, just maybe that's an experience that, to, to look out for. All right, let's go now to Brian in Tampa. Hi, Brian. What would you like to say? Hi, Brian. You're on the air. All right, thanks for that call, Brian. You're breaking up a little bit, um, but yeah, so, so Lux, what do you think about the, the issue that maybe this is just having more surveillance out there? I, I don't get that sense, to be honest. I, I really feel more that it's perhaps well-meaning, perhaps a knee-jerk political, politically motivated action. Um, I've seen surveys where a fairly large percentage of ordinary quote-unquote people, uh, when asked the question, support these measures in Ybor City. So, you know, I don't, I don't really think that's what's motivating it. I just think that uh, it, it hasn't been well thought through. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org if you'd like to join this conversation. Uh, th this did not, hasn't passed, there hasn't been a vote on it or anything. It's just been brought up one time at Tampa City Council. Uh, no decision was made. But C Council Member Harry Cohen said the City Council would consider the matter in the future. And this is what Harry Cohen had to say last Thursday. If you would come Thanks. at uh, a regular City Council yeah, meeting, can you turn which it there is a quorum. Our next one is on June 7th. And any, any proposal that's put out there, any ordinance that's proposed, will have two readings and it will have uh, the ability for the public to come and comment on the specific items in that proposed ordinance at a public hearing. So your, your chance to be heard is not over. It will, uh, it will continue and it will uh, take place when we actually have an ordinance in front of us. All right, that's Tampa City Council member Harry Cohen. He's saying that the city will continue and there's nothing that's a done deal. There will be public hearings. What do you know, Lux, about what the future of this might hold? Well, I, I believe that for me, the concern is having been involved in, in um, initiatives of, of various types that governments are, are arguing over. Usually when it gets to this stage, there's been uh, a lot more discussion than, than what we know. There's been a lot of memos. I know that uh, these proposals have been drafted by uh, the city's legal department uh, based on recommendations from the Board Development Corporation Board of Directors. So I think to paint this as being in its initial phases is probably uh, not, not a good idea. For, for anyone opposing this, I think that the time is short to organize and, uh, and oppose these measures, and uh, I don't really know the extent to which the city 
is, is being uh, forthright about really working with business owners. Um, I guess we'll find out, but uh, I, I believe the important thing is that the city knows that this is citywide and this isn't just clubs, it's not just Ebor. It is citywide, and it's and it's everyone with a with an alcohol license of any sort. All right, let's go back to the phones. Jen in Tampa, you're on the air. What would you like to say? What's your response to that, Lux? Um, it absolutely, as it's written, it absolutely would encompass restaurants. Um, I can I can briefly describe uh, what would be considered a nightclub. It would be um, it would be either any business that charges a cover or requires a drink minimum, or a business that satisfies three of the following four conditions: one, it holds over 250 people; two, it's open past 11 p.m. Three, it has a dance floor, or four, it advertises DJs or bands. Um, so based on three of those four, I would say open past 11, dance floor, and DJs and bands, many of the restaurants um, and small bars, neighborhood taverns, and things like that would be uh, included in that. All right, thanks so much for that call, Jen. We'll go now to Anonymous in Newport Ritchie. Hi, Anonymous. Very good. Good. while, yeah, I'd be able to get a drink underage, but sooner or later, they got caught, and uh, oftentimes, they wouldn't let people under 21 in after that, and uh, I just, I don't know, I'm not sure about this ordinance, um, I think a lot of the clubs do a good job as far as maintaining themselves, especially places in Ebor because of where they're located. All right, thanks for that call, Anonymous. So um, I, I guess what you're saying is that you think that it's kind of unnecessary because the clubs, clubs um, police themselves? Well, thanks for that call, Anonymous. And uh, Lux, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'd like to point out that um, under the, the laws the way they are, because I'm not a legal expert, but to the best of my knowledge, that um, it's the bartenders who actually serve the underage patron who face uh, fines and even jail time. So uh, all the incentives are um, on the bartenders to and not to do that. All right, let me give out the number again. It's 813-239-9663. If you want to email us a question or a comment, it's dj at wmnf.org. It's 5.54 in the afternoon. You're listening to Last Call. I'm Sean Canan. My guest is Lux DeVoid. He owns the Mermaid Tavern in Seminole Heights, and we're talking about a proposal in Tampa City Council to uh, place restrictions on nightclubs and, and other types of establishments. And I want to ask you a question. Where can people find, um, there's a Facebook page, right, about people who are concerned about this. Correct. It was started a week ago today, and within 24 hours there were 4,000 members. Well, tell us about this Facebook page, if you know, and, and where people can find it. Well, I have to say I kind of got into the Facebook uh, page part of it uh, a little late, so I, I wasn't one of, the, was one of the people that started on that. Um, I, uh, I did not actually bring the Facebook, uh, the actual page name with me, but uh, I think you probably get it if you searched around a little bit. I know that, uh, I believe that uh, 
and myself at the Mermaid Tavern are both are, are have friended the, the, the page, so you could at least find it from those pages. I didn't bring the name of it either, but I know that if you go to WMNF.org news and you find the story I did last Thursday about this, I did put a link in there.